Uh, today's show, guys, is brought to us by FanDuel, title sponsor. Happy to have them on board today. The sports calendar is loaded, and FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action because right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use on the tourney. Major League Baseball, the NBA, NHL, and so much more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And today's winning ticket comes from Trey from Friday. He hit a couple same-game parlays on opening day in Major League Baseball that he parlayed together, turned $15.38 into $1,000.59. A hell of a win here for Trey Seager. And if you have a winning wow. ticket, as always, make sure you guys send them in to us on Twitter, to on thousand. email, whatever, boy. and we'll feature it on the show. You know what I'm saying? Man, I, I tell you, that that's really tough to do. My son sent Tyvis and I a text, Corey, where he built a seven-game opening day parlay. And he wanted up my reaction. And I'm like, are you nuts? <laughs> like, opening day baseball? Yeah. You're going to bet on that? You might as well just light your money on fire and enjoy the burn. Stop talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> Stop talking about me. I mean, <laughs> a little close to home. Gambling yeah. is not about what bet am I going to make today. It's about what day are you going to make your bet. That triggered me. I had that, sa- no lie. I had that same exact parlay except I had uh, De La Cruz for two stolen base. Are you kidding me? I had him for two stolen base. Wow. wow. That would have paid even more, right? Yeah. Man, oh, man. Yeah, it's just, it's a crapshoot, and baseball is underway. The season began uh, last week. The Guardians looked like they were off and running. They get three great wins, and then yesterday they hit a little bit of a speed bump. Actually, Blackburn, I watched his, I, I didn't watch it, I, I read about his last two starts in spring training, mm-hmm. the A's pitcher who started yesterday, mm-hmm. and I think he went like 12 or 13 innings and only allowed two hits. So he clearly figured something out as spring training went along. And he carried that right into the opener. He looked like their ace because the other pitchers that they threw at the at the uh, Guardians had no chance. I almost texted you guys. <laughs> These might be worse than they were last year, based on what we saw that weekend. I, I could buy that. It's like they, they can't field the ball. No, they're shortstop. They're missing is cutoff atrocious. man. They're yes. missing cutoff man. They're in the wrong position. Nine. It just happened over and over. Watching Saturday was just a nightmare. I would have, I would have been, a, I would have had to turn it off if that was my team. It looked oh. like a script of a movie. You know, how like, like, like you scripted <laughs> up a baseball movie. Yeah. From, from like rats yes. to riches. That's well, what it looked like. It reminds me a little bit of Major League. That's exactly what it looked They've like. They've dumbed down the roster <laughs> to the point where they're unrecognizable. These are four A players. Oh yeah. At best, and then they, they, they're not just going to move. We're going to hold this over the city. For three years. Yep. Actually more. What, 28, I think, is when they say the move is going to happen? Mm, yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, so you got 24, 25, 26, 27? I think it's three years of limbo. 25, 26. And, yeah, well, yeah, you're right. And then 28, they would start. Yeah, yeah. And this year's a, I mean, this is a limbo year, too. Yeah. It's unbelievable what they're doing to what was once a great fan base. Yeah. Think about it. In the span of a few years, Oakland has lost the Warriors, the Raiders, yeah. and now the A's. Yeah. And it's a great fan base. It's it's devastating Tremendous. what's happened to that side. Is it true that it was less than 4,200 people at that game yesterday? It looked like it. Oh, the, I can buy that. The second game, I think the announced attendance was 3,000. That's crazy. Oh, my it's goodness. A joke. It's a joke. What they had 14,000 the- for opening day, which is supposed to be a, you know, a six-month popping of the champagne cork. There was more people in the parking lot than there were inside We talked the about that on Friday. Yeah. Yeah, they protested. Crazy. They said, we're going to come, but we're not going to come in and watch the product. So, what so, do you guys make a vote, though, in the Guardians? Let's look at this. Yeah, the, what do you give an opening grade? Let's see it. Uh, so, for me, not to jump out the gym because it is the A's, I got to give them a B plus. I thought the thing that stood out to me the most for them, we are known to be a team that has a dominant rotation. But we hit the wall very, very well in our opening series against the A's. I think we compiled 42 hits and we scored 30 runs. You compare that to last year, four-game series opening against Seattle, we, hit, we had 31 hits and 20 runs scored. Now, I know the quality of opponent is, is it's a huge gap there, right? But to me, that was the biggest thing that stood out. Like, yeah. they hit the ball. I remember talking to you about just listening to interviews of Stephen Volt talking about taking a different approach the years past, having the uh, hitters be more aggressive in, in accounts. And you've seen that put on full display. I think once they go to Seattle tonight, I think uh, if they could duplicate, duplicate that, 
you know, and, and have some sustained success there. That's a we big might if. Ha- that's a big if. Yeah. But we might have something. So I guess now I'm just tracking the philosophy change at the at, to, to the right. approach to see at how the plate, it, yeah, translates. to see how it trans- translates. Jay, what were, what were your opening impressions? Uh, I like that he plays a lot of players. I like yep. that. I like, and he's like, they're going to keep doing this. They're, you know, Mike Cargo back in the day said our starters are starters for a reason. And if you were a starter, you played 155 games. Like, you didn't get a day off. And, and the game has changed, and, and you're going to see guys. You're going to see Gabi Arias in different spots and different guys getting days off. But I really like Tyler Freeman in center field. I hope that continues. It looks like it will. It looks like he's won that job for now. Estevan Florial, you have to see what you have in him. Right. They're going to have to take a look at him. But it looks like Freeman is the guy there. And eventually you're going to get Manzardo up. Uh, and and maybe maybe you get Chase DeLauder up if you move on from Florial. But you have to give Florial at least a month, at least, if not probably longer than that. Uh, but, I, you know, those are the things I like. Earl, I hear you. But when you go from Oakland pitching to Seattle pitching, it's like going from the Mahoney Valley scrappers to the actual major leagues, like Seattle's right. rotation is This legit. is a pro team. Yes. We will we'll get a little bit better barometer of how good they really are. And, again, it's one series. It's right. April. But this is tremendous pitching that they're about to see this week in Seattle. Oakland, it's impossible to make any sort of judgments based off, off of that team. But I, will, I, I do want to give one little shout-out. Their fifth starter, who we didn't get a chance to see, Joe Boyle, actually worked out in Cleveland. Joe, no one pays attention to the A's. He's the A's fifth starter. He throws literally 101, and he has no idea where it's going most of the time. Oh, wow. But he worked out with my son uh, all winter long. Really? And, yeah. He was up here. His girlfriend is in the area. Wow. So Joe worked out in Cleveland all winter long. Tremendous guy. He was surrounded by kids all winter, and he was phenomenal with That's all great. of them. That's great. And if there's one guy you want to root for, it's Joe Boyle. So uh, I want to give him a little bit of a plug. The, the Guardians I wish I wish the him. Guardians could have seen him then. I know. I wish they would have seen him. the one four pitcher in their series. rotation. He's their fifth starter, so yeah. they missed him maybe later on. They'll catch him later on in the year. Love to hear stories like well, that. Shout out to you, Joe. Yeah, but, love to hear stories. And we'll follow him. You know? Yeah. I love to hear that he's working with kids and that the kids really responded to him and they enjoyed him. Yeah. He, he was. I mean, he was in there getting his workouts in, and he was throwing, and he was surrounded by kids all the time and, and – a lot of them didn't even know who he was, but he had on an A's headband or whatever sure. else, and he was just gracious and polite. And he looked entirely different from looked everybody entirely, else that was oh, throwing. Oh, yeah. He's, <laughs> liter- he's every bit of like 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, yeah. surrounded by 12-year-olds. That's funny. <laughs> um, I've got a, a lot of first impressions, but I want to preface all of it by saying this was extended spring training. Yeah. It really was. That I, I, I put nothing into the fact that they were 3-1. and one. Mm-hmm. I put nothing into the fact that they're – you know, except for Shane Bieber, I, sh- I think Shane Bieber, what he did is transferable to the Seattle lineup. Yes. Um, Bieber looked like Cy Young again. He, he had control of everything. The extra velocity has made his off-speed stuff that much more dangerous. Yes. And it's not just that his fastball's a few ticks higher. It's how it changes what everything else looks like. And the difference now between his off-speed stuff and his fastball is is the difference in miles per hour that you want in the front of the rotation guy. Yep. So I think what he did is transferable. I also think what Jimenez did is transferable because he hit a lot of different kinds of pitching mm-hmm. and was aggressive. I, I said on Friday, I felt that Steven Vogt overthought the opening day lineup. I did not like Hosey in the two. I particularly did not like Jimenez in the seven. I think, I think it looked like he rectified that right away. I mean, it was just maybe an experiment that he was trying. I, I didn't love it. Well, I think you're going to see Jose in two quite a bit this year. I don't love that. He talked about I, it at spring training, and I think Ho- Jose likes it, and it's the whole idea of getting your better hitters higher in the order and getting more at-bats. I like that. Yeah. I but joked I, 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 we need more opportunity. We need men on base in front of him. Yeah, I know. And when you hit him in the two, now I know this year's nine hitter is going to be a lot different than last year's yeah. nine hitter. Yeah. And the on-base percentage is going to be greater. But I just... I look at who's the power source. Well, that's easy. I want to put him in a spot in my lineup where we can maximize those 25 or 30 home runs. Right. You do that when he's hitting with a lot of guys on base. He's The most men he can have on base in his first half bat is one. Right. And as you go through the lineup, if it's flipping by the time he comes up and not leading off, the chances of the eight, nine hitters getting on base are much lower than that of a one and two hitter. I just think statistically, and you know I'm not a big uh, analytics guy, but in this particular case, I like getting him more at-bats. What that comes out to over the course of a season 
it's negligible yeah. compared to how much impact he can have with more runners on base. I do think Tyler Freeman can make a, two, a good two-hole hitter, possibly. He's got great barrel control. First of all, he has to prove he can stick in the majors. This that's, is his first extended. True. And if he proves he can handle it, he can handle center field. His bat can play, and I think his bat can play. I think he can roll out of bed and hit 280 in the majors. He's that's a hitter. I agree with you on Jimenez. They have been hesitant. We saw it a little bit this weekend. They've been hesitant to move him up in the order. He's always been a lower the order hitter. I don't know if it's a confidence thing with him, if it's a mental thing with him, but they tend to like to keep him in the lower part of the order. If they move him up, that would be great. Yeah. Him, he would be a terrific two If they hitter. can still get the same production out of him. Yes. But I also think Freeman could be a really good two-hitter. A Quan Freeman back-to-back. I like that. There's a lot of hit-and-run potential with Quan on first and opening the hole on the right side and Freeman spraying it through. Like, yeah. I, I think that that could really be a thing if he proves he's ready. <laughs> Tyler has to prove he can hit Major League Pitching at a consistent level. Uh, Stephen Kwan is uh, – I think well, he's already been a great player. I think <clears> – <throat> they showed a, a graphic. I think it was on Friday or Saturday. It might have been Friday. They showed a graphic comparing Stephen Kwan's offensive production through his first whatever at-bats, mm-hmm. 1,200 at-bats, to – Jose Altuve. Yeah, I saw. I didn't see the graphic, but I heard them talking about the comparison. It was it's an eerily similar. Compa- eerily almost similar. Almost identical. Now, I don't know that he'll ever have Altuve's power. Yeah. But if he can have the average and the stolen bases, he made a play defensively Friday night where it, the, the runner on first and second were moving. The ball was hit to Steven in left field. Mm-hmm. He alertly, as he was fielding the ball, <laughs> saw that the runner who was running on the hit got caught off second base. And he, instead of throwing to third, like 99% of fielders would automatically do because that's the book, yep. he caught him off base, fired it to second, caught him in a rundown, and they ended the inning. Um, it's little things like his baseball IQ is off the charts. So I, I think Stephen Kwan is going to be the kind of player for a long time that Cleveland can really embrace. I did my thoughts on vote, and this is to be expected when he's new. I think every decision early in your career is magnified. Oh, sure. Go back to the first time we all sat in these chairs and we were launching this show. We were different. We weren't as relaxed. We were pressing. We were trying too hard. All of that. I think vote will settle in, but I do think he overmanaged a little bit. What'd you think of the squeeze yesterday? <clears throat> I didn't love it. I don't mind squeezes. I don't either. I don't know that Arius is the right one to squeeze with. I agree with that. But also, (laughs) you're a major league player. You ought to be able to get a bunt down. Put the ball out of the ball. So I'm kind of torn on that because I I can think of a lot of guys I'd rather have in that position to to put that play on with. And I know a lot of new age analytics are completely against bunting and think it's awful. I tend to like the suicide squeeze. Yeah, I do too. Uh, I didn't love it in that instance, but at the same time, you're a major leaguer. Put the ball. In yeah, th- that's that's my thought exactly. I like it as a play. It's you got to use it judiciously, obviously. But to me, you should be able to call that with whoever's at the plate. Yes, I agree. It's a bunt. Yeah. From playing the game my whole life, I can tell you the the percentage chance of putting the bat on the ball is never higher than when you're squared. <laughs> <laughs> All you have to do is essentially, well, I had a coach early in my life that said, look at the barrel as, as a glove. Yeah. And when you're playing catch, you follow the ball wherever it's thrown into the glove. Yep. If you look at the barrel of the bat, the top 13, 14 inches of the bat as a glove, yep. It should be easy to put a, and you're not swinging it, so you're taking all the movement out of it. Right. You're jabbing at it. Yeah. And it should be easy to do that. And it's a lost art today, it really Jay. Is. Guys can't do it. Nobody. They, they used to practice it. I know. In batting practice, your first few swings used to be Always. bunts. Lay two down. One yeah. down the left field line, yeah. one down the right field line, swing away. I mean, I don't watch the batting practice all the time, but I don't think they even do it anymore. I don't think they work on it. I mean, it's, it's the obvious. It's a, Proof is in the pudding. Yeah. I'd like, to, I'd like to see a number on the percentage of bunt tries that are actually successful in whatever the objective was, to move the runner over, in yeah. this case, to get the run home. Yeah. Didn't love that. It's early. I'm not going to beat him up for anything. I told right. Bull on Friday. He's got a month to two month long honeymoon for me. Sure. Um, he's going to make mistakes. He's going to do things where we're watching at home saying, what, what is he doing right I now? I want him to experiment and sure. try. Figure like, it out. Figure yeah. it out early in the season. Yeah. All the games all count for the same. 
you, you don't want to screw it up late in the season. Get, get those mistakes out of the figure way now. Out what you're, you're, he's still learning all these guys. Figure out exactly. Figure out what they can do. Ask them to do things that Tito didn't ask them to do. That's why I'm not going to kill him over Arias. Like, right. It's not the number one guy you would pick, but hey, let's see if you can get it down. I so want to bring experiment up with one name um, that I think we need to watch for. The big reliever that came in Saturday night, Smith. Is it Cade Smith? Cade Smith. Oh, yeah. I, I was watching him throw. There were two guys that I didn't know that jumped off the mound at me when I was in spring training. One was Will Dion. I talked about him. He was the Clippers see him. opening day starter. He was the little guy. He's like 5'7". I didn't see him when I was out there. I, uh, I asked Carl about him, and he goes, wow, it's, it's odd that you asked about him. Why do you ask about him? I said, I watched his bullpen. This guy's stuff. Like, forget where it's coming from and what yeah. that looks like. All those mechanics are great. I said, I just watched his stuff. It's unbelievable. He said, good eye. This guy has won at every level. He was a low-level draft pick out of, like, Louisiana Lafayette. Yeah. He's won at every level. He's going to be a big league pitcher. I saw he got the opening day start in Columbus. Wow. Then he's not very far away. No. He's closer than I thought. I thought maybe he might be a year away. Depending on injuries, we could see him this year. The other guy that jumped off the mound to me was Cade Smith. Yeah. I mean, it's hard not to have to be impressed. His velocity is, I think, if he, I don't know if he touches 100. He's high 90s. But I think he may touch 100. And he's imposing. And you, when you look at them, they talked about it Saturday night in the telecast, and it's funny because I wasn't standing with Bart and, and um, oh, who was he talking to? He was having a conversation that he talked about on the air about Andre, mm-hmm. about, man, the, the Guardians pitching staff could be an NBA team <laughs> because you've got Gaddis, yep. you've got all these guys, you've got McKenzie, uh, the lefty out of the pen. Oh, uh, Henches is big. Henches is like 6'8". It looks like a basketball. Cade Smith comes in there. He's like 6'5 or 6'6. Six, six. Big, imposing, and I think he struck out five of the six outs he recorded in his two innings of relief. I think this kid's going to be a di- difference maker for this team soon. Well, they need him because Trevor Steffen's out for the year. Steffen's out for the That's year, and I think loss. somebody else has got a I mean, Karen Check is Karen jacked up. Got the He's shoulder. on the 60-day, I think. Yeah, so, so they, they need some new faces on the back end because the guys you're used to seeing – aren't going to be there. They're not going to be there. And you know what? I thought yesterday, obviously, the bullpen just was imploded there in the ninth inning. Um, And those are the guys that I worry about throwing strikes. Yeah. Um, Both of them, uh, in in their time this year, have been all over the zone. And they they can't come in and... Barlow was a wild pick. It was an, I shouldn't say wild. It was an interesting pickup to me. For a team that cuts every corner... I thought so, too. And cuts every dollar, to spend $7 million on him... It's sort of a little bit of a reclamation project. And then when the Classe trade rumors surfaced, I thought, well, okay, I guess that's why they went and got Barlow. Yeah. And one of the, the Ruben Niebla left the Guardians and went to the Padres, and, and Barlow was with him in San Diego. And they did something, and I wish I had the whole story. Meisel was, Zach Meisel was telling me this. They had him more upright in his, in his delivery. Yeah. And the, in, the results were instantaneous. And it really sort of turned him back because he was really good for a while in Kansas City. He was great. And I wondered, the the signing was that, and he was good against the Guardians. In fact, I talked to Barlow about that in Arizona. Arizona. I said, what is it like now to, you know, be on this team? For so many years, you were, you know, a division rival. And he said, well, I'm glad I don't have to pitch to them anymore. But he always had success against them. And I wondered if there wasn't some some historical bias in there when they went and got him. Yeah, because and he was remembering so good how good them. he was. Yeah. I do think I don't know if he can be about, that good again. I don't know either, but I know there was something about his delivery and he was more upright in his posture in San Diego and it really turned some things. So we'll see. I mean it was one weekend. We'll see yeah. if they can if they can take him back to All in all, three and one is what you want. I think the big surprise for me was the fact that the Tigers swept the White Sox. I'm not surprised. I've been talking to Bull. I'm, I'm big on the Tigers this year. Well, I, I like I think them, they're good. And the White Sox are trash. I just would have thought, <laughs> you know, 4-0. They, you know, Tigers got hot last year, finished above the Guardians, I think yeah. a game or two. Yeah, they did. Finished above the Guardians. And they're definitely, their arrow's definitely going up oh, after yeah. years yeah. of struggling and trying to figure it out. Um, that Miggy contract put them in oh, a killed world them. of killed hurt. Them where they're a 100-loss team for four or five years in a row. I think Detroit's now lineup ready. is legit if they have enough pitching. And, I mean, they've got some veterans now. And, I mean, one of their top prospects, they put back in AAA, who was a major league pitcher. Matt Manning had success last year. Wow. And they're so deep now in their rotation, he's back in AAA and not happy about it. So, I, I think they're legit. I think Kansas City is going to be better than people think. This division isn't great. We know it's not yeah. a great division. I do think it's going to be better than people think. I think did, 87 uh, won it last year. Did Bobby Witt end up hitting for the cycle? 
I know he, no, like, no, hit he did not. Shav hitting for the cycle like the third <laughs> inning or something like that. Oh, I like the third or fourth Witt. inning. Yeah, yeah. he had Bobby a single, Witt. triple, and home. I think he missed by a double. He missed it by a double. double. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so so all in all, quick. three and one. It's 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 a pretty good start. It's better than one and three against. You are kidding. It could have been a disaster. Yeah. For both of you all, Tristan McKenzie pitches tonight. Any any thoughts on which? I can't wait to see it. I want to see it. It's like opening that present on Christmas Day. When you know it's in the box, yeah. like you knew what was in there, but you can't have it. Yeah. And now we get to unwrap it and use it. And to me, that's what McKenzie is today. The fact he's made it this far makes me feel better because I was like, what are you doing? Like, this is a huge risk not having the surgery. But the fact that he made it all the way through spring training, I mean, he's not out of the woods, but mm-hmm. he feels like he's got the compass in the right direction and, and you can see. The city. You I'll know, tell you you're, this. You're getting close. I'm still going to be holding my breath on every pitch. Oh, sure. <laughs> I think we all are. When, when, you're, we all um, are. when you're teetering on that edge, I did the same thing. I mean, I, have a, I had a slight tear in my UCL, decided against surgery, had a procedure mm-hmm. that's supposed to, you know, who knows. But the, the last thing the doctor said was, look, this is certainly not an insurance policy yeah. that you're not going to tear it again. Yeah. We didn't do the long haul. We're doing the shortcut. And those always scare me. Um, especially with his, he throws so hard and his frame is so, looks so fragile. It's an interesting decision for him only because he doesn't have big money yet. I know. And I don't know who's going to pay him. And maybe I'm wrong. Like maybe this is nothing. He's going to go on and have a great year this year and a great year next year. And everything's going to be fine. But if I'm a major league team, do you really want to invest big dollars in a guy that has that tear? You know it's lurking. You would think that as a young guy, you would just get it taken care of. Everybody has Tommy John surgery. The only thing with getting it taken care of is you don't – the unknown when you come back is great. Yeah. You know, it's not like a knee for – I mean, even for a running back, even though that's a big tool for him, th- this is it for mm-hmm. the pitcher. Yeah. That is it. And you can come back and be better than ever. You can also come back and not regain your old form. I feel like most guys, though, Johan Santana was the one that was never the same. Never he the same, never but wasn't same. he a little bit older, too, when he had it? No, I think he was, he young? He was in Minnesota. He was pretty young. Yeah, boy, he was and so he, good early and he, on. And he was never the same pitcher after that. But for the most part, I think most guys come back just as good. It's a gamble better. either way. You yeah. have it. When you have it, you're not throwing a baseball for 12 months. Right. So, you know, you're looking at not only Had all he, of last season, but you're looking at maybe July lost, of this yes, year. Yes, And then you've got a small window to come out and perform. And yeah. It's a risk. I hope and you made the right choice. not all tears are the same. Not all tears are in the same location. And maybe this was the right call all, all along. Right. When you hear a tear, though, and a pitcher opts against. And, I, and I, the one that comes to mind is uh, the Tanaka. He pitched for years with a, with a torn ligament in his elbow, and he was fine. Yeah, but it's very rare. And, but, and, and I had people at the Guardian say it's more common than you think. You really? Don't know, yeah, that you just don't know as many of the names, but guys have done this before. I'm like, wow. okay, well, we'll see. Yeah, hopefully it works out. Uh, three and one, all arrows are pointing up. We'll have a much better idea four or five days from now about what this team's going to look like. Mikey? One last Guardians question before we pivot here to the Cavs. And Earl, I want to start with you. We talked about... The power surge. Tyvis projected them to finish top half in the league in home runs. Stephen Kwan hit one. Jose hit one, but just two home runs in four games. Are we going to be having this power conversation or lack thereof all season? R- Ramirez long? had one taken away, too. He did. Yeah. It could have been three. In the yeah. first inning of Saturday's game, I think. I think. So. The, it was, the ball was over the fence. Outfielder yeah, made a great play. Yeah. He took it, all, took it away. What do you think? You think the power surge is going to be an issue this year? Uh... I guess it's too early to tell. I guess for me, I'm just excited to see them actually, you know, put putting the bat on the ball and actually, you know, being efficient at the plate, scoring runs and hitting the ball. But like you all said, you know, you would get a better sense of what this team would really look like once they start playing more quality opponents. So yeah. it's really hard to say on, on a power dump. Jimenez know, hit a ball, too, that would have been out in a lot of parks. It was the off-the-wall shot to right field. It yeah. was pretty high up the wall. Yeah. You know, if the fence isn't as high as it is out there at, at, in Oakland, that might also have been a home run. So, But, again, the pitch, you'd expect they would have a lot of home runs against the pitching staff they faced. So Yeah, yeah, not a great staff. I don't think they're going to be top half of the league in home runs. I think that's pie in the sky. But they, sh- they certainly should be better than they yeah. were last year. And it's one thing that Kwan worked on. Stephen Kwan worked on intentionally missing baseballs. He's so programmed to hit the baseball. Yeah. He had to all winter – work on intentionally swinging so early that he missed 
just to get used to the feeling of swinging and missing that it, it's okay. Right. And they do think that there's more power in Quan. He's not going to hit 20, 25, but double digits probably isn't out of the question for him. Yeah, he I think he can get to double, get to double digits. digits. Yeah. I do. Yeah. So he's off to a good start, that's for sure. All right, Mike. We're going to talk.